Hey everyone, I did a video demonstrating an ME80 patch a couple weeks ago and somebody asked me about the cords so I decided to go ahead and put together, put together a video um, showing that. Um, the cords are actually taken from a Beyonce song called Love on Top and uh, I do it with a full band but I also play it acoustically so I came up with a guitar arrangement because it's mostly keyboard based. So I'm going to show you what I did first in case you didn't see the video before that. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the coloring I did with some of these chords. I'm not going to concentrate too much on the fingering and where everything placed. I have a, um, I put a chart in there where um, it kind of has some of my chicken scratch, a PDF, so that you can download it and print it out. And if you need more information, you can go on Google and Google the chords. There's usually a lot of good resources there and on YouTube, um, so you can check that out. And just as a sidebar, I'm not really a musical expert, so I kind of, you know, kind of go with, with the flow and kind of learn as I go. Um, so if I'm saying something that needs correction, um, feel free to comment, please. I'm always here to learn, so all good. Let's do this. The first chord that I'm playing is a C, a C major 7 chord, so that, I play that up here. So the coloring that I do on it is I kind of play around with the notes that are within the chord here. So I guess the, the way that I think about it is the, um, the thing of uh, a chord is a scale and a scale is a chord. So. playing around with that chord and kind of coloring it in there. So that's um, C major 7, which you can play it up here, or you can play it. A bit of a and, um, or there's an octave. And then I go down to, the, to an F sharp minor 7 flat 5, which is this. So that's sort of like diminished, and um, what's so cool about these kind of chords, it's like a little box, um, but they sound good, like if you can add them in a chord progression, whatever key, they're just so weird. What I do, like sometimes with my coloring, sometimes like I'll, I'll do this little give it a little flavor or I'll use my my little tremolo um, just to kind of give it a little flavor and the thing the thing about coloring is it's good to do it it's good to add it just to add you know more more feeling or or flavor or, or a little spice to your playing but the thing would be is just to not overdo it or use it in the spots that you know that matter the most, that kind of make it special. So most of that time, I can't tell you where that is. Most of the time you're just feeling it. So, um, but don't ever overuse it only because then it just sounds too forced. So I have the F sharp minor seven, and then I'm going to an F major seven. And that's basically just like what I'm doing here. That C major seven. And then I go, to a, another major seventh chord, which is an A flat major seven. Now I'm playing the, I'm actually playing the A flat chord up here in this different position. This note is dead. You could play the A flat major seven here too. It's beautiful up there. <clears throat> and then 
I go to a G7 sharp 11. To dominant. I actually don't do that, but you could resolve. It sounds nice. Okay, so let's touch on the B section. The first chord I'm playing is a D minor 9. And then I go to that back to that chord, G7 sharp 11, to F7, and then I go to the E minor 11, I but I do this little run here when I hit the E minor 7, uh, I'm sorry, the E minor 11. And so what I'm doing there is I'm just kind of like, kind of taking the idea again of chord scale, scale chord. Um, but I, I'm thinking here, this is like the fourth position of the pentatonic scale for E minor. This is just my way of thinking. So, so I'm playing around with this like little boxed area of you know, the minor chord. So we go from there to the A minor 7. And again, uh, you know, an A minor 7, you can... choose where you want to put that color in to the A minor 7. Now in this in this B section it goes around twice but what I do is I change it up the second time. I'm doing D minor 9 and then I'm going to the D flat 9. So what I did there was I kind of changed up that, sec that second chord because um, when I was playing it with the band we were like doing the progression. And then we were going to play it again, and I was like, that's so boring. You know, I want to change it to this, to this passing chord or this substitution chord. It's kind of like the idea of substituting um, a chord just to kind of enhance your progression a little bit. So I, I um, put in that D flat 9 because it kind of like, people don't expect it. Like, you pretty much are like, you know, having them do a double take. Like, what? Did, did they just play that chord? So, and it kind of adds a little flavor. To your stuff so the there's a the idea of substituting chords or pa using passing chords in your playing or even taking like a, if there's like a major chord in your progression and using a relative minor um, those kind of things can enhance your chord progression kind of playing you know when you're playing something that's kind of like redundant so, um, so like, just for example, like, if I take a D, C, G progression, so I'm playing um, D, C. there was instead of playing D I went to the, um, the B, minor, B minor 7 and like if you you can look this up in Google but the D major the relative minor is a B is a B minor so so like if you if you have something like that you know you can always look and see what the relative minor is and see if that fits again if it fits within the song and within the vocals and the melody, you know, you're good. Most of the time, you can get away with it. <laughs> All right, so that was it, and I hope it helped you out. Um, if you have any questions or, you know, kind of need a little bit more, then just hit me up and, you know, we could talk. Or, you know, I can do Skype, so, you know, just to get in there just to show you a little more. But, you know, it's all good. So, um, but thank you for watching. Peace and love. Thanks.